three key areas that constitute a diagnosis of a learning disability. Um, the first area is that the individual would have a significant cognitive impairment. So what that means is a global cognitive impairment um, across lots of different ranges of cognition or thinking. Um, and what that could include is visual spatial abilities, um, non-verbal reasoning, um, verbal comprehension, and what you'd see is, is on average a IQ of less than 70 would constitute a learning disability diagnosis. The second area which constitutes a diagnosis of a learning disability is what we call an impairment in adaptive functioning. And that's, that's really a fancy way of talking about somebody's social functioning and ability to navigate aspects of daily life. So examples like that might include difficulties in relation to personal care, it might include difficulties in relation to certain aspects of behaviour. The third criteria to uh, receive a diagnosis of a learning disability is that the previous two areas um, occur before the age of 18. So what that usually means for people is a lot of the clients that we support have uh, genetic conditions. So examples of that might be things like Down syndrome or Turner syndrome or Williams syndrome. But there's many genetic conditions um, that may cause a learning disability or also may not. Um, the other areas would be, for example, difficulties during pregnancy or during childbirth. So for example, oxygen deprivation. And the other things that might happen may be um, a brain injury or a significant impairment to the brain during early childhood. If these difficulties start to be noticed after the age of 18, they aren't best explained by the diagnosis of a learning disability. That isn't to say what the client is experiencing is any lesser in any way, shape or form, but instead it might be explained better by other diagnoses or formulations or understandings. So this, for example, could be um, somebody receiving a brain injury, um, a neurodevelopmental condition, um, a form of dementia, um, the impact that mental health might have on cognition, the impact substance use might have on cognition, but also the impact things like trauma, um, social adversity, poverty also might have on cognition as well. Many clients who we support in our service have diagnoses of autism spectrum conditions. But that doesn't mean that all people with autism spectrum conditions have a learning disability and vice versa. Um, that does mean that they may have some specific sensory needs and support needs in relation to these conditions, but that should be seen as something which is separate but related. Another thing which might be helpful to clarify is the difference between a learning difficulty and a learning disability. A learning disability is what we described earlier Whereas a learning difficulty is a specific cognitive difficulty which may be really significant and impact someone but isn't global like a learning disability. An example of something like that might be dyslexia, dyspraxia or dyscalculia. And what we're not saying is that if somebody um, meets the criteria for all of the things that I discuss, they have a learning disability, um, it's more of a tool for um, curiosity that um, might support you to think, could this person's needs be understood as a learning disability? Do they need further assessment or do they need um, specific adaptions in relation to the support that we're providing for them? If somebody had a GCSE, an A level or a degree, um, it would be very unlikely that they would meet the criteria of having a diagnosis of a learning disability. How a person navigated their way through the education system. For example, did they attend a mainstream school with a statement of educational need, or did they not attend a mainstream school? Is this person able to read or write? Can this person tell the time? Or would this person be able to read something like a bus timetable? Other indicators might include um, the person having a driving license. That would be quite unlikely for someone with a learning disability due to the cognitive demands of driving a car. It's important to think about somebody's living situation. Do they live independently or do they live with support? Do they require a level of care at home? Somebody's employment history could be really useful in understanding whether or not they may have a diagnosis of a learning disability.